and here we are in Avignon. The building behind me is all covered in scaffolding, so you can't actually see the station behind me. Welcome to Avignon. We have reached the summit of the Pope's Palace, so, so let's, let's start, start the, the show. show. But well, Avignon is quite a small city and from the station it is a clear straight walk up to the main sites which includes the Pope's Palace and the Avignon Bridge which doesn't go anywhere because it's only half a bridge. It used to be a full bridge but now it stops halfway across the river. City Administrative so I guess that is the town hall or the city hall perhaps and the French flag is flying outside the building. I think it is the hottest it has been up until now. I think we're going up to about 27, 28 but then it feels about 30, 31 degrees. Yes, there is quite a high level of humidity and I'm wearing my cap for protection from the sun. Not only that, but I'm still recovering from the bites that I got in Montpellier. And uh, you can see one of my finger yeah. to sort of, and my arm, look, look at this. But I am taking antihistamines and so are you, Paul, because you got a couple of bites, though not as bad as mine, right? Well, I think that they're a bit more well hidden. Yes, mine are exposed. I like this little electric vehicle, but the one behind it, I like even more. Isn't this a Citroen Monami? It is from our friends, me and Monami on YouTube. <laughs> and across the street is one of your favorite shops, I our man Theory. I didn't even buy anything from there, but I did see it in um, Marseille. You just like the look of it. Fit anything in there. It's like so petite. And speaking of petite, oh look, it actually says tickets, petite train. Oh, is, is, is that what you were talking about? Sure the tiny train? Look, tickets, petite train, open tour. I think I might want to get one of these tourist things. Oh look, Marcus, look what I spy. Oh, Collins Irish Pub. Oh my goodness. Well, um, we've only just arrived, so I'm not sure if I had a drink now. It'd be a good idea. Maybe later? Especially on a really hot day like this. <laughs> Dehydration, my dear. Well, this is interesting. An old British phone box, now used as a mini library. Let's see what they have, shall we? Do you know what I bet they've got in there? Dial M for murder, Paul? Wouldn't it be funny if it was there? Um, we have lots of, um, lots of French things. Well, it is France. And look, they even have magazines down here. And they have a really thick book by Mary Higgins Clark. Ah. There's a lovely little square just to eat behind me here. And what do you think of it, Paul? I think it provides a really good shade against this really um, scorching sunshine. Yes, indeed it does. What do you think this is, Paul? Uh, water fountain, maybe? Some sort of grinding machine. Coffee, maybe? Some sort of mill, do you think? 
Let us know in the comments if you know what this is. Oh, <laughs> does it say menu on it? It does. So what is this that's on the menu? Look, I brought my little friend with me. Thanks for bringing me. Love you. <laughs> I think we really don't eat until the very two or something. Oh. If you need information, you could go to the tourism office and look what is outside, or at least inside looking out. Paris mascot? Yeah. Not that I think we're going to get lost, but I have just picked up a city map from the tourist office. Look, we have Cote Sushi over here, and then we have Montreux and Pink Shoes. And then we do have some other retail outlets and hotels along the way. Do you think this is a church? This looks like a bank of some sort, right? Well, it's got Cristo on it. It could be a museum. Mm. I think it is actually a museum. Oh, right, yeah. Passion. Our favorite shop again, Manapri. I think that we spent a lot of money there already, although the day is still young, so you never know. Ah, the Pinocchio restaurant. It's growing on me. L'Occitane en Provence, Paul. We see this a lot. Yeah, I think that this brand is also in the UK that I've seen it like in John Lewis and like other retailers like Boots as well. But I think it should be from this region. Because this is Provence. Oh look, m &S. Yeah, that is what I thought so as well. But then on closer inspection, it says NNS. Ah, <laughs> go figure. Well, this certainly seems the place to go if you want to eat. Lots of outdoor dining opportunities here. And it is lunchtime while we are here and we are on the hunt for food. So we might have to stop off at one of these places. Yeah, I think so. Either that or McDonald's. <laughs> hotel de Ville. Well, I'm not sure that it is a hotel. It looks more like a town hall to me. And there's a sign outside that says that Avignon is the okay. 2025 City of Culture. Oh. Fancy a go on the merry-go-round? It stopped at the moment, so it looks as though they're ready to take on some passengers, and that could be us. Do you know something? I always loved going on the merry-go-round at Barry's Amusements in Port Rush, and I would never sit on a horse. I would always sit in one of the little carriages, just like that one going past right now. So we're very close to the Pope's Palace now. It actually says it's in that direction, just up there. I thought that was a tram, because you, well, it's just like a little single carriage vehicle type Do you know thing. I don't know what it is. Do you know what? I think that this tour group is headed for the House of Papals. Yes. House of Popes. Should we follow them? <laughs> yes, but in the meantime, look, look at this. It makes the sound of a tram. Do you think this is it? Yes, this is it.
Wow, look at this. Magnifique. Paul is being very busy, being a very good tour guide, taking people's pictures over there. Look at that. The expert at work. Is that your good deed for the day? Someone asked me to take a picture for them, and I took three. Oh, well, they'll have to pick the best one out of it then. I don't know what, how good they were, but he wanted it in a certain area, so. Very picky, these tourists, aren't they? And there is the little train. The Palace of the Popes is an historical palace located here in Avignon. It is one of the largest and most important medieval Gothic buildings in Europe. Once a fortress and palace, the papal residence was a seat of Western Christianity during the 14th century. Six papal conclaves were held in the palace, leading to the elections of Benedict VII in 1334 and several others up until 1394. Since 1995, the palace has been classified, along with the historic centre of Avignon, as a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its outstanding architecture and historical importance to the papacy. Well, we've left the Pope's Palace for now because we do need lunch. We might return. It's five euro to go to the gardens of the palace, 12 euro to visit the palace as well. But I think we might just have a look at the gardens. But Paul says he saw a Vietnamese restaurant earlier that he liked the look of. So we're gonna have a look for that. I think it might be that yellow sign in the distance. Yes. Well, it is rather expensive here in the main square and outside the palace. You're looking at between 18 and 25 euro uh, just for like one course for lunch. So that is a little bit too much for lunchtime in an evening, perhaps. But we're looking for something a little bit more economical. Marcus, I am sure this place is going to be a lot cheaper. Well, I don't even know how you spotted it because we didn't even come up this way. I saw it like on the sides, like on the main street. Oh, right. Well, let's hope it's open then. So we're down one of the side streets now. I see lights on inside, but is anyone home? Oh, yes. What do you think? I think worst case scenario, I will have to do translate. Well, it is actually in English over here. There is a 1790 euro menu. But then that's a good fix. Yeah, but look, you get a starter, a main course and a dessert. That looks pretty good. And at least we know what it is. I think that was my favourite lunch so far. So far, wow. Yes, okay. so now we are going to have a look at the Papal Gardens. We are flying the flag for YouTube. So it's Paul and Marcus on YouTube. Just hit the subscribe button.
apparently the garden was very small and wasn't really worth well, seeing. Yeah. There was a free garden, so we thought, well, let's just pay it again because we have come here. And so we are at the courtyard hmm. just now. Yes, and you don't just need to look at a picture of it there, <laughs> you can actually see it because we are actually here. This is quite welcome shade on such a hot day, isn't it, Paul? Yes, it is. So we should say that it cost us 17 euro each to get in. And I think it should be worth it. Well, it's worth it just for this coolness already. Lots of steps. This is the hall where there was the crowning of Pope Innocent the Sixth in the winter of thirteen fifty two. It's funny, Paul, because I thought I could smell cement. And I thought, is it ancient cement? But no, actually, they're doing some renovations here. Look, it is actual cement. There's nothing like the smell of wet cement in an old building. So we're at the top of the tower now and gosh, it's really hot up here. Careful, Paul. It's at your own risk. I think this is like a two-way street or is it one way? I don't know. I think it's one way. Overlooking here is where we were before. So you could see all those seating areas. How am I going to tackle this one? I might be able to get up, but will I be able to get down again? Well, I just came from here. There's a door open, and we're now in an air-conditioned room. Paul, what is this? This is just so that you could buy... Um... We came up all the way just for a vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. I thought it was some ancient artifact. Yes, um, vending machines. Oh, my dear. Shall we go? Yep. Here we go. There's hardly anything to hold on to. I might not make it. Right. What if I get stuck, Paul? All right. Where are we? We're at the Great Audience West. So I'm assuming here's where the Pope would entertain all the guests he has coming. Well, I thought we were going to be gypped, Paul, because there was no sign of the garden, but then we did actually find the signpost. And they did request the ticket. Isn't that correct? 
Yes, and were you kind of annoyed that we didn't do this before? Well, no, it was just that it's not really that well signposted and we did have to ask someone where it was. You've just looked up the temperature, it's 28 degrees Celsius, feels like 30. Oh, it feels hotter than that. That's the humidity factor on top of it as well. So we have the Asasio on a cone and also beer de latte, iced sugar cream. <laughs> What's it taste like? It tastes like a just like a vanilla. Oh all right. I saw a trip. Oh, for fuck's sake. Where did I trip? Mm. I didn't want anything with a strong flavour.
So originally the Avignon Bridge was made out of wood. It was later destroyed and rebuilt in stone several times. The bridge underwent several changes and had to be restored on different occasions. Originally it was 900 metres long. It was made up of 22 original arches that supported it. In 1660 a flood destroyed a large portion of the bridge and this is the state in which it can be seen today. Originally the bridge was made up of 22 arches, only 4 remain. Therefore part of the bridge only remains which is why it does not cross the river and stands in the middle of the river. Well, it looks as though we've reached the end of the line, or shall I say, the end of the bridge. Literally. Well, thanks for watching today's episode. For those of you that have liked it, give us a thumbs up. For those of you that want to leave a comment, you can do so as well. And for those of you that haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. It will help us along our journey on YouTube to reach a thousand or more subscribers. And if you would like to buy us a coffee to help us along the way, there is a link in the description. So from Avignon, it's goodbye. Au See you next time. Au